if a, if a person prays his istikhara and he he makes effort towards something, the challenges, the challenges, the challenges. Where's the where's the line in saying? Do you know what this is my qadr or you know keep trying to pass through, keep trying to pass through, keep trying to pass through? Because in your case, for example, it was meant to be, and and you know you keep you kept persevering. But is there not an argument that? Why aren't you accepting your qadr kind of thing? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Where, 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 when, do, when, at what mm. point do you say of time camel? Okay, so with regard to qadr, is that using qadr as an excuse must always be for something in the past. Okay. You must never use qadr as an excuse for something present or something in the future. Okay. That doesn't mean it's not in part of qadr, it is, but it's not an excuse. So you don't say about something coming up next week. Oh, it's not my qadr to get it. Okay, okay. Yeah. You say in the past, it wasn't my qadr to get in this year. It wasn't my qadr to memorize this ayah today. Because that's in the past. But not something you're doing right now. You don't use al ihtijaj bil qadr. You need to use qadr as a dalil unless it's something in the past that you had, did, you had done everything in your ability. And that's because qadr is something that happens, you can't avoid it. Okay. But you have... Resp- you, the way you respond to what Allah decrees for you determines your reward. So, for example, Allah has decreed a calamity for you. Yeah, that in itself is not connected to you, but what is connected to you is how you respond to that calamity, okay. and how you change, and how you you know what you decide to do. And that's why, as a, as a you know, as a side point of benefit, is that one of the scholars said, "What's the difference between someone who is being punished and someone who's being?" forgiven for by through a calamity so two people have the same event they both get cancer one of them is being punished and one of them is being forgiven what's the difference how do you know very simple you know by the reaction of the person if they get closer to allah if that it's making them closer to allah then they're being forgiven and if it's making them further away from allah then this is nearer to being we don't we don't make like we don't say for certain but it's, right. it's nearer to being a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's really important that you know we react to things, uh, in, 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 in we react to Qadr in the right way, which is that the more you learn about Qadr, the more inspiration you should have to work. And this is how you know if you understand Qadr properly. Like someone might say like Qadr is a tough topic. Yeah? Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimullah, said it's a sea that has no end to it. If you don't mm. climb upon the ship of the Sunnah, you'll be drowned. Or words to that effect. I mean, if you, if you imagine this, it's a tough topic, but the way you know you've understood it properly is really simple. If you learn about Qadr and your motivation is to work really, really hard and beg Allah to save you, you've done it. Okay. If your reaction is, oh, there's no point in doing that now, uh, no point, may as well give up, never mind, then you know you haven't understood Qadr properly. Right. And you have a misunderstanding in that topic. So this is just for all the you know all the Muslims listening and and you know thinking like it's a tough topic. It is a tough topic. Um, I've got a video on it, but it's it's a tough topic. But if you've understood it right, you just should feel super motivated to work. Like you should just feel like I want to just keep going and going and going and going, because if you're trying really hard for something also, and it's another, like sort of a side point, it's not the only reason, but if you're trying really hard for something, first of all, the Prophet ﷺ said that everyone will be made easy what he was created for. Be made easy for him what he was created for. So you, if you're wor- working really hard, then Allah is going to make it easy for you to achieve what you want. And if you're lazy, Allah is going to decree for it to be difficult for you to get what you want. If that makes sense. And Allah says, Allah gives an increase in guidance to those who are guided. He says, and I, if you understand it, the problems of Qadr go away. Like if you work hard for guidance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it to you. And if you really want it and you really strive for it and work for it and, and you know, bust a gut to be able to get it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it to you. But if you're lazy and sit back and say, you know, if I, if only and if only, you know, then in that case, you have nobody to blame except yourself. Uh, and the, also the eye in which Allah subhanahu says that those who strive in our ways, uh, we will guide them to our ways. And those who strive for us, those people who work really hard for our sake, we're going to guide them to the right way. And part of Qadr is feeling a desperate need of Allah. Like you feel like 
you feel like, you know what it is? There's no way I'm going to get to Jannah no matter how many good deeds I do unless Allah guides me. Mm -hmm. So now I feel humility and I feel submission. And that's, you know, people say, why did Allah make Qadr something we have to believe in? Like, why? Why why has Allah made Qadr something that we as Muslims have to believe in? It has so many benefits. One of them is it lowers you in the sight, you know, in front of Allah. You submit yourself to Allah. Because you feel like, you know what it is, there's no way that I'm even going to get even within a hand span of Jannah unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes me there. Mm. So I need him. I need to make dua to him. I need to do what he tells me to do. I need to strive for him so that I can get there. Because just purely just working for myself is not going to get me there. And that's the first thing. But also it tells you that Allah is infinitely just and fair. And if someone really wants something and is really working for it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them what is best for them. And you know, you could say like if there was no qadr, uh, you work for something, you get it, but it might not be good for you. Like, like I really want this job. I really want this. I really want to study in Medina. And you go for it and go for it and go for it. You study in Medina, you graduate and you turn out misguiding other people. It wasn't good for you. Right. But instead, qadr is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah says, nah, I'm not going to give it to you. Because I know it's not the right thing for you right now. I might give it to you later. I might give you something better instead. But I know it's not right for you right now. I say, it's a beautiful thing. So come back to your question. There's a few different ways to look at this, uh, this issue. One thing is, if the thing itself that you're striving for is good for you, then don't stop striving for something good. Especially if it's something Allah has made obligatory for you or Allah has told you that you should do. Don't stop striving for something good. You know, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you to, if someone said, I'm struggling to pray five times a day, should I just stop? No, you have to pray five times a day. You just keep on struggling, keep on striving, keep on working. That's the first thing. The second thing is don't confuse the objective and the means. So my objective is what? To learn Islam. My, my means of doing so is to go to Medina. Allah azza wa may block a certain means for me and open another one. But the objective doesn't change. So someone may say like, you know, like I haven't been able to go to Medina, I'm not going to study Islam. But that's confusing the means and the objective. If your means is to study Islam, if your objective is to study Islam, the means are available all over the world. Different means, different places, different institutes, different online, offline, with a teacher, without a teacher. Studying Islam has not been closed for anybody. You know, the door is open for everyone. But the question is, is this particular means maybe not good for me? And going to Medina itself may not be good for me. But maybe going to Makkah would be good for me. Maybe going to Medina would not be good for me, but studying online right now would be good for me and then going later. You know, at the end of the day, like if you have a good goal, don't confuse the goal with how you get there. How you get there might change, but the goal should be the same to, to, to learn. I mean, what is your goal for seeking knowledge? Like Imam Ahmed said, that you intend to remove ignorance from yourself and others. So if that's my goal, I'm willing for Allah to guide me to whichever way is best for me to achieve that goal. It's the goal that I want. And that's why it's not generally. And so it's okay to make dua for Allah for, for, for certain means. But it's better generally to ask for the objective. So to say, وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي ilma, Oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Rather than saying, uh, Oh Allah, allow me to get into this class in this year, this time. Even though that's okay too. Because... That may not be the best thing for you, but the knowledge is definitely good for you. So whichever way Allah makes it easy for you. So I think that's a, that's how I would respond to that question. Jazakallah <laughs> khair, Shaykh. 